Hey what's up everyone, it's Justin here and today I'm here to give you my first impressions of the LG G4. So I've had this device for about 2 days now and I've been able to play around with it and I have to say it is a pretty awesome phone. So after HTC and Samsung had already released their flagships for the year in April, LG is here with the LG G4 which came slightly earlier than it did last year. And although the LG G4 in a lot of ways has stayed the same as last year, the improvements made this year are actually pretty good. So just to get the specs out of the way, the LG G4 features a 5.5 inch 2560 by 1440 resolution display with a PPI of 534. As you may remember, the G3 last year was one of the first devices to implement a Quad HD display and most manufacturers are jumping onto that now. On the spec sheet, it may sound exactly the same as last year, but they have actually made some significant improvements to the display in terms of the color accuracy, the vividness, as well as the brightness. It is by far the brightest display I have ever seen. Even slightly brighter than the Samsung Galaxy S6, which originally I thought was the brightest screen I have ever seen. The device features a 1.8GHz 64-bit hexa-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 808 processor with 3 gigs of RAM and also features a 16 megapixel rear facing camera which is something that everybody is very excited to check out as well as an 8 megapixel front facing camera. This year LG has made some small improvements to the design as well. The device itself is available in a whole variety of colors and finishes and what interests me the most is the leather backs. You can see there is a whole range of genuine leather backs that you can choose from but in case you don't like that you can also go with the standard plastic back which I'm showing you in this video but I definitely hope to get my hands on a leather back as soon as possible. As in my opinion I think it looks great. You may also notice that the device has a slight curve or bend, and that isn't because there's another bend gate controversy here, but the fact that the device is meant to be curved slightly, that way when you drop it face down, it is 20% more resistant to damage. It really isn't noticeable at all, and when laying it down I have to say it looks pretty cool. The device itself measures in at 9.8mm thick and weighs in at 155 grams. Another thing you may have noticed is that LG has gone button free on the sides once again. We noticed that with the LG G2, the G3, and once again on the G4. The buttons are located on the back as always, and if you're an LG user, I'm sure you're used to it by now. And as a result of that, the device is extremely seamless and beautiful. So now I want to just give you guys a quick tour around the device and the software and in the past years the thing that has really broken it for me with LG devices is the software. I absolutely hated it, I thought the visual experience wasn't the best and it just seemed to stutter a lot. The G3 experienced that, the LG Flex also experienced that. But playing around with the software here I definitely noticed that it is far more responsive than the past years and that is to be expected out of a flagship device. I was quite surprised when I noticed lag in the G3. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, this display is much brighter and probably one of the brightest displays I have ever seen. And as a result of that, if you're using your device in sunlight, it should fare very well. The viewing angles are also great and what I noticed is that the colors are extremely vivid. That may not offer the most accurate color representation, but it looks damn good in my opinion, and if you want a more accurate look, you can also switch the display's mode to natural, which will kind of tone down the saturation. When it comes to the notification pull down, it pretty much stays the same as past years, and I'm not going to say I hate it, but I'm definitely not the biggest fan of it, especially that second menu below, as it takes up a lot of space in your notification bar. I would have liked it if they had just kept it to quick toggle settings and also the brightness control. Moving on with the settings tab, you have the option to have it in a list or tab view. The tab view will divide it into the networks, sound and notifications, display, and general, which makes everything easier to navigate around and find more quickly. Or you can just go with the standard list view, which I'm sure a lot of people are used to from the past, and that works as well. Other than that, in the software front, I didn't notice any huge changes. Of course, there's the visual tweaks here and there, but the most important thing is that it is far more responsive than years before. So the camera was a huge talk of the LG G4 upon their announcement, and the G3 had one of the best smartphone cameras last year. The laser autofocus was laser fast. But this year, LG wanted to give you more freedom with your camera and is trying to go towards professional photographers out there by allowing you to have full control over your camera and pretty much having a DSLR kind of replacement in your pocket. 
It features a 1.8 aperture lens, and I'll definitely be testing that out and bringing you guys a dedicated camera test on the LG G4, of course. Something that companies are increasingly moving away from are removable backs, as you may have seen in the Samsung Galaxy S6 this year, where Samsung closed it off and you aren't able to remove your battery and also have expandable storage as well. On the G4 they have kept that and you have a removable 3000 mAh battery and a micro SD card slot expandable up to 2 terabytes if you're crazy enough to do that. But I guess if this is your DSLR replacement as LG wants it to be, you need somewhere to store that crispy 4K video. Other than that, this has just been my first impressions of the LG G4 and it would be awesome if you guys would leave your comments down below as to what videos you would like to see of this device and so far I have ideas such as a pretty cool camera test, possibly some comparisons, of course there will be a full review coming up, but as always I would like to hear your thoughts down below and be sure to hit that like button while you're at it as it helps this channel out a bunch. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.